All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Terry Levine, who is in where today, Terry? What part of the world? Hey, I happen to be in Pennsylvania. Ah, Pennsylvania. Lovely, lovely part of the world as well. And uh, Terry is the founder of Heart Heart. Repreneur LLC is a business and executive coaching expert and assists businesses worldwide with business growth, sales, and marketing. And today we're going to talk about marketing with the conversion equation, the key to more prospects and closing sales. All right. So Terry, the obvious question is, what is the conversion <laughs> equation? That's the best question to start yeah, with. It is. So I have established for myself six different multi-million dollar businesses in all different mm -hmm. industries. And I've helped about 6,000 people do the same using a formula and I'll teach it because most people do marketing all wrong. So very simply, it is to first interrupt, then it is to engage, then it is to educate, and finally it is to offer. And there's nuances, of course, in there. If you apply this and you do it correctly, you will have a conveyor belt, I really mean that, of qualified prospects and you'll be making the kind of money in your business that you desire and that you deserve. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that idea of interrupt because let's face it, like we, we are such a distracted mm -hmm. uh, society today and a culture and so little attention span is that you know, a lot of marketing and messages and stuff, they just, they just float by. They're just pretty pictures in the wind. They're there, they're gone. We don't really uh, take them in at all. So let's talk a little bit about how do, you, how do you interrupt people who are already distracted? So what I find is, and you've said it, you know, people are so busy. There's so many marketing messages. You can't look at your, your Gmail. You can't go look at social media without marketing. So interrupt the concept. Let me just explain that is that when most people are looking at things online or offline, they're in what is called downtime, which means they're mm. not really paying any attention. Have, have you, John, like ever driven somewhere and been like, did I remember the, to go through the red lights or did I stop? Oh yeah, I mean, all the time. I mean, it's funny. I mean, if you do that, if you drive, like I do sometimes San Diego to LA and back and suddenly you're like, like what happened to Orange County? Exactly. <laughs> so the concept, and that, that nails it, the concept of interrupt is to get the right people out of downtime, to get their brain into uptime, to go, oh, wait, that particular message speaks just to me. So if it's a message about parenting and I'm not a parent, mm -hmm. I stay in yeah. downtime. If I am a parent, I get pay attention. So does that part make sense for interrupt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because um, there's some people who do it really well. And I've noticed actually recently is, because I, I go on, Instagram is the only real social media that I, I kind of use personally. And I find I get interrupted all the time by these, these ads, not that they pop up and that I ignore them. They pop up and I click on them. Mm -hmm. I hear <laughs> you. Yeah. And because they do talk to things that I'm interested in or whatever, and then, um, and I find that I have to actually stop myself because otherwise I'd be constantly buying things that I don't need. Um, but I see, but, um, so that's Instagram, but in a, you know, in a, in a wider sense, like when you look at most of the marketing and you look at corporate websites and all of that, there's very little in there that you would, that would stop you in your tracks. And that's the problem. Most people's marketing doesn't talk to a very specific audience who has a very specific problem. And so it's, it's nothing that interrupts people. You know, if you just say, oh, um, you know, sell your goods on Amazon, that's not that exciting. If you say, I have a formula that will make $20,000 selling your goods on Amazon, if you want to learn it, pay attention. If I want to learn it, now I'm paying attention. Mm -hmm. So you interrupt the right audience with the right message. And then you have to follow the engage, educate offer as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the engage part. Okay, so you got my intention. You interrupted me. I have those couple of, couple of seconds in my goldfish attention span. Now, how do you engage me? So think of interrupt as a headline that yeah. you get person to pay attention to engage you can call it a subhead 
people go right back into downtime unless very quickly there's a fact or there's a piece of data or information that makes them curious. So let's say I interrupt you and say, hey, if you're a woman between 25 and 35, I have the secret to how you can lose weight. You go, oh, that's me, I pay attention. Now mm -hmm. you engage me with a subhead that says, Julie is just like you, read her story of how she lost weight without dieting and exercise. So now I've engaged you, another word for that is hooked you, to take mm -hmm. you a little bit further. And the goal is to keep your brain in uptime, no more going into downtime. And, and what you mentioned there, so a lot of it is, it has to be very relatable to engage you, right? Just the, the, the example that you just there with the weight loss and, you know, here's, here's this person and they did that. It has to be relatable, something so that you go, oh, okay, that sounds a little bit like me. Exactly, exactly what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then the, the next part of it? So the third step is educate. Now you've mm -hmm. interrupted me, you've engaged me. Now you have to actually teach me something. And I want to speak to this for a moment. Most people don't bother to do that. They instantly go, watch my webinar, download my book. And no, 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 we're not ready for that. We're creating a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. Educate is now give me something of value. Teach me something, tell me something help me in some way, shape, or form. So um, if it's this weight loss example that I'm making up, I might say, here's the four foods that you really want to focus on in your weight loss journey. Teach me something. And by the way, that still keeps me in uptime. It keeps me curious. And it sorts, sifts, and separates the right people to pay attention to you. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense because in the example that you use there is, um, I might have, I might, I might be surprised by the four foods that you mention. I might, or it might reinforce, oh, that's good because that's the ones I thought of, or whatever. But it is, it's, it, it is provoking something in me. And even better is, I'm far more likely to share that nugget with somebody else. Exactly right. You're totally getting it. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, and I do think you're correct is, I mean, I do think a lot of people miss the whole education piece. Um, and it doesn't have to, because sometimes I think when people think of education or educate, they think it has to be something, you know, comprehensive and big, and that sounds like it's time consuming and all of that. But the example you just used is just something as simple, sim simple nuggets of wisdom. Yeah, so you drop in a point of information, data, a fact, something, not too much. You don't need to mm -hmm. weigh people down. You don't need to go create a whole bunch of stuff. People think they have to create no creation. What you're showing people is that you have their answers. You're an expert. And if you can teach me something that I don't know, I'm going to be really interested in what you have to say. So don't think that everybody knows what you know. I give marketing, business, and sales advice and I used to assume, well, everybody knows what I know. And now I realize, no, people don't know what I know. So whatever you know that you're an expert in, give a little bit of education. And then the last step is offer. You want me to speak to that? Yeah, just, and just before you, you, you do, you just, you just said something that was incredibly important there that I want people to, I want to underline for people. And that is, you're so correct, is that sometimes we assume people know more than they do. And therefore, we, we think, okay, well, I could share this, but sure, everybody knows that. Or it's, it's really simple. You should never assume because the, the, and I've seen this, I've experienced this as I, 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 some years back, like I run a, a sales training consultancy, global business, and, and we did um, spin selling Neil Rackham's um, yeah, book. Yeah. And we worked with some of the biggest companies in the world. And sometimes when we would go in for a, you know, a prospecting presentation, uh, the salesperson would start presenting some of the most basic sales approaches, right? And when I first got there, when I first took over, I'd be like getting a bit embarrassed and going, my goodness, this is a really big, like Fortune 500 company. They're going to laugh us out of the room on this. And then, you know, the executives would go, yeah, no, that's really interesting. Yes, we don't do that. This is, this is really, and I'm like, wow. So to your point is like, we should never assume the level of knowledge because sometimes what you think are simple things that people already know, to your point, they don't. Exactly. And, and just drop a nugget that educates mm -hmm. people. The right people will stay interested. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's go on to the next step. So the last step is offer. And by the way, this is where people usually have it not in the right order. Mm -hmm. They're constantly pitching and floating and click here. And no, 
You wait until you're building a relationship. You interrupt the right person. You engage them. You educate them. And now you make a low or no risk offer. You don't try and take them to buy anything that is going to have a risk. So it might be download my free report, watch mm -hmm. my free training, attend my free class, whatever it might be. Or even if it's a, another kind of an offer, make it low risk or guarantee. So that what you're doing is you're building a heart entrepreneur relationship, heart-based, I care, you matter, I'm serving you, here's my hand making an offer, would you like to go further with me? That's all, no pitching, no selling. And I like that idea too of, of the, the, the low risk, um, because let's face it, we're all very risk averse. And I think we've become even more cynical maybe as buyers than we've ever been. So we, we want to dip our toe in the water. So if you try to, if you try to sell us the whole farm at one time, probably not gonna, but if you let us sample a couple of apples from the orchard, then maybe. Exactly, exactly. And when you make the offer, just keep in mind, it's as if someone just traveled to your home and they had a long journey. You open the front door and you say, oh, John, I just made some lemonade. Would you like some? That's all. Right. You're making the offer in that way. And don't take it personally. If you say, you know, Terry, no, maybe you don't like lemonade. Maybe you're mm -hmm. not thirsty. It doesn't matter. You just make the offer in a very charge neutral way. Yeah. And, and with that, and by following that, as you say, with you, with making that heart to heart connection, it means that perhaps, yeah, perhaps that person doesn't like lemonade, but perhaps they walk down the road and bump into someone else and they say, do you like lemonade? Yeah. Well, listen, Terry's got the best lemonade up the road and she's, <laughs> she's happy to give you some. So, I mean, basically what I'm saying is you're letting somebody, you're, somebody is walking away, but with a, with positively disposed towards you. Exactly. And if it's the right person, the whole technique is basically reverse marketing where mm -hmm. they're raising their hand. You're not chasing prospects and they're saying, yes, I'm interested. And it, it works. I mean, just today, for as an example, in my company, we have 30 people who are highly qualified who raise their hand just because we interrupted them, engaged them, educated them. And then the offer was simply raise your hand if you want to go further. 30 people raise their hand. Very simple. We don't have to hunt for people. Yeah, and I love that, like, raise your hand if you want to go further, because as you say, it's like, it's, it's they're, they're making the decision to move as opposed to you trying to push them. And, and, the, and yeah, I, I really like that idea because raising your hand is just like, yeah, actually, I'd like to go further. And it almost means that you can't do a hard sell on them at that point because they have, very kindly volunteered. So you have to engage with them in a more kind of equal and, and say heart to heart fashion. Yes, it really allows for heartfelt conversation and it allows for transformation versus transaction. So mm -hmm. you're not looking to do transactions, you're looking to see how can my product or service transform the life of this qualified prospect, the business, the life, the relationship, the health, whatever you provide. And have you found, uh, I know you've been doing this for a while and you've got a, you've got a lot of experience and being very successful, but have you found even in recent times that people are maybe looking more and more for that human element, that, that human interaction, that heart to heart? Because we've been through a period where everybody went a bit technology crazy and then everybody went at arm's length and then everybody was hiding behind technology and all of that. And even before the, you know, the pandemic hit, I got a sense that people were sort of, there was a lot of fatigue around not having human contact, not having, you know, uh, interaction with real people. And, and obviously, I think the pandemic has accentuated that. Um, but had, had you been seeing that, that this, this kind of heart to heart approach was really coming, coming back into vogue? I'm glad you asked that. For the last about 11 years, maybe even 12, I started to see the shift. I started mm -hmm. to see get burned out on transactions, on companies that were pushing, overcoming objections, hard selling, um, using tons and tons of, of ads. And people were just getting very turned off. And that's why I decided to be very disruptive and to teach people how to do business heart to heart, authentically, 
transparently and with integrity. And it's not only grown their businesses significantly, it's actually making a big difference in the joy that they have in their businesses, mm -hmm. whether they're the owner or in sales, doesn't really matter. Yeah, and I and I think that the auth authenticity ha has become an even bigger issue because I think even with the pandemic, I think when people were all forced to go home and restricted, it, it promote or prompted a lot of soul searching, and and also people were sitting there for the first time without the distractions of offices around them, and I think that authentically connecting with people and 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 here's the funny thing is you know, people say well you know it's not the same when if you're doing it virtually and on zoom and all that and I go well not so much actually because you can actually connect with people and sometimes on a on a deeper level with people that aren't physically in front of you that you are talking to through a video chat or whatever because for some reason you, the focus is even greater I would totally agree with that so I you know I've been virtual as a company for 26 years so I was like mm -hmm. the fourth beta tester in Zoom. Yeah. I think a long time. And you can actually have really good relationships mm -hmm. in this fashion. The most effective nonverbal communication area that we have on the human body is the face. Right. So if you really just focus in and there's no distraction, I can't get caught up in your body language or anything. We can actually have a real conversation with you. Yes, I would prefer to be there in a way we can hug and we can do that. And so if we can't, this is still a wonderful way to interact and to connect. Yeah, no, absolutely, 100%. Well, listen, Terry, this has been great. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing that. I do think that there is, uh, I do think that there's going to be even greater interest in your approach, you know, heart to heart going forward, because I do think it's what people are craving. Um, all of Terry's information will be below this video. But before we go, Terry, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. So I'm the founder of Heartrepreneur, which is heartrepreneur.com. And we work with business owners who provide any kind of a service or salespeople to really understand how to do business applying the conversion equation. And we do something a little unique. We guarantee 200% ROI, return on investment, or we pay you all your money back, plus I write you a check for $5,000. That's how sure I am of the formula. I'm also a best-selling author, a TV host, radio show host, and mostly I just love serving. Yeah, and, and I'll hazard a guess that you haven't written many, if any, of those $5,000 checks. I have been asked to write one over all these years, 6,000 clients, and that person never showed up and did any of the work, so. Uh, that's love it. No, I think that's great. I mean, that's a superb um, testimonial that you would stand behind your work that to that point where you would not just refund, but you'd actually give extra on top. Um, I think it's fantastic. Listen, Terry, thank you very much. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.